This quarter, we showed everyone what being the best is all about. Our global network and technology team continued to add 5G ultra wideband cities and event venues. We accelerated our C-band build to get ready to expand 5G ultra wideband to millions, and we extended our industry-leading network award-winning streaks. Our IT team created an unmatched experience for our customers and V-teamers. And when disasters hit, our Verizon Response and Verizon Frontline teams were there before, during, and after doing what we've always done throughout our history. Our business team continued to win today while building for tomorrow. We announced industry-leading 5G Business Unlimited plans and expanded our 5G business internet footprint. We continued to make new markets, launching BlueJeans Telehealth, featuring an integration with the Apple Health app, and private real-time edge compute with Microsoft Azure. We expanded our impact as the partner of choice and were named the official 5G network partner of the NFL. And Verizon Public Sector announced some significant contract wins. Our consumer team continued to rock retail with some truly iconic launches. The new iPhone 13 lineup, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 and Z Flip 3, and the Motorola One 5G UW Ace featuring our very own Verizon adaptive sound. We added AMC Plus on us to the best array of offers there is, gave consumers and media a sneak peek of Met Gaming, continued our 5G home cities expansion, launched the Verizon Internet Gateway, an LTE and 5G ready home device. All while Fios continued to win almost every award. RV team culture continues to shine. We celebrated diverse voices and experiences, earned a perfect score on the 2021 Disability Equality Index. As part of Citizen Verizon, we settled our third green bond offering launched the free Verizon Innovative Learning HQ portal and the free Small Business Digital Ready online curriculum. We shared stories on how Verizon reconnected New York after 9-11. We launched Work Forward in 48 countries, and we showed up for people impacted by disasters with voice, text, and data relief. Welcome you to Basking Ridge, New Jersey for our 3Q21 earnings results webcast. It is great to be with all of you. It's great to be with our leaders here in person and virtually, and of course with all of you V-teamers all across the world. This is a celebration of all that we've accomplished. You saw that video there. Uh, we've got 4Q to go. Let's finish uh, 3Q, uh, let's finish 4Q strong. Let's finish 21, 2021 strong. Uh, and with that, uh, we've got a lot to talk about and a lot to celebrate. So let's uh, continue to do that. We'd love your questions as well. So send your questions, of course, to live at verizon.com. We'll be taking some questions. Our leaders will be answering those questions as well. But uh, before we get started on those questions, let's bring up Hans uh, and uh, talk a little bit about 3Q. Hans, it's good to be with you, sir. <laughs> hey, Andy, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about that. But starting with, of course, talking a little bit what's happening in the world and, and uh, 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 we, we know that the pandemic is not over, uh, and this different uh, situation, different markets, and uh, uh, sometimes we don't talk about the rest of the world. So I just want to shout out for the rest of the world as well. We talk a lot about the US, but uh, uh, we know there are different situations with the pandemic in different countries, and the safety uh, of all our V-teamers across the globe is, uh, is extremely important. So I just want to start with that so we don't forget that. Uh, then I can talk about the third quarter, of course. Sure. Uh, coming hot from the press this morning, Matt and I met all the investors and uh, we made a press release. Uh, it's a solid quarter. We are performing well in the market. I mean, we grew our service revenue, which is uh, wireless service revenue, which is an important measurement with 3.9%. Uh, that was supported by both good uh, sort of wireless new customers, upgrades that we're doing on the consumer side and on the business side, but also the broadband side is also growing very nicely and helping us in the Fios and the fixed wireless access. So that is helping us uh, to grow and ultimately also that we, gen we generated the bottom line. So our EBITDA, which is the measurement on the result, Matt will come back to it, grew 3.5% or 3.3%. So a good quarter. We compete very effectively in the market. I mean, I have to say both on the business side and on the 
uh, on the consumer side. We are doing well. We have the assets. We have our ways of working, mix and match, uh, the way of giving value to our customers. Uh, and that is paying off. And I have to shout out to, the, uh, to our uh, people in the stores. You are doing a great job to seeing that we are giving the right offerings to the customers when they come in. And uh, also the omni-channel, of course, is important when it comes to sales. Uh, starting a little bit on the network side, just to go quickly through what we have. I mean, the network team, of course, they have never deployed so much equipment as they're doing. We sometimes talk about the C-band the, the deployment, but remember, they're doing millimeter wave, 4, 4G augmentation. They're doing open for sales in, in, in fiber. They're doing fiber in different places. They're doing uh, millimeter wave. And of course, all that, they need to keep the best network. And uh, as you might have heard, we continue on the strike to winning all root metrics and all JD powers. It's just an amazing work the team is doing. And we are on track to deliver the 100 million uh, subscriber coverage or 100 million population coverage one year after we, we got the C-band, uh, meaning somewhere in the beginning of, of 2021. We're on track on that. Uh, however, uh, we all know that we, there are some supply chain, uh, supply chain challenges out there. But I need to do a big shout out to the supply chain team, to the te technology team, the network team. We are finding ways around this all the time. And we were very early on planning. We planned with our vendors years ahead to have all the equipment. Without that, we would have far bigger problems. That's why Matt and I can actually go on stage today saying that we're going to deliver and exceed all the the, the targets and guidance we gave for this year. And you're going to hear Matt talking later on. We actually increased our financial uh, guidance for, for the year, for the fourth quarter. So all in all, I have to say, very happy what is happening in the network side. But don't forget the IT uh, and a shout out to the IT. I mean, we had the iconic launch. We have the omni-channel. We are doing different UX. We're building platforms behind the Verizon Business Group enormously important for us to actually have the possibility to work with a network and service and seeing that we have this possibility with mix and match and differentiation both on consumer and business side. Uh, finally, just quickly, two things on the 5G, great momentum on, on mobility. Now 25% of our customers have a, a 5G phone. It's growing much faster than 4G did when that came. Uh, both on business side and, uh, uh, and consumer side. Uh, fixed wireless access. This was the first quarter that Matt and I disclosed how many co subscribers we have on fixed wireless access and how many uh, open for sale or household passed, I would say, on fixed wireless access. And, and we have a nationwide broadband strategy. We're going to have different type of accesses for different customers, sometimes Fios, sometimes uh, it's going to be 5G, 4G, it's going to be millimeter wave C-band. This is really a strength for us. We're going to have owner's economics on broadband as well as on wireless, and that's part of our strategy we have. So very excited over that and what we're disclosing this quarter on fixed wireless access. And remember, that's part of our journey for growth that is so important. We, we talked about it in the huddle in the fourth quarter, and I just want to end up with, yes, we're performing well, we're doing well, but we have all the assets, we have all the strength in the market. We need to overperform. We need to be so much better than the others. We are the number one in the market. The only thing I can tell you, we need to exceed on that. We need to continue to lead in that. And that's how we, the mindset I want from all the V-teamers coming into the fourth quarter. Hey, yes, we're fine. We're performing well. But that's not good enough when you're the leader. You need to exceed and you need to outperform all other competitors. And I expect us to do that with all the assets we have and the, all the things we're doing in technology, supply chain, business group, and, and the consumer group. So, yeah, that's a wrap on the quarter, I guess, and a little bit more. <laughs> I, I tell you, the, the results, yes, give it up for 3Q results there, yeah. <laughs> I, what it shows is our V-teamers are ready to meet and exceed the challenges. Yeah, I think that that's the message I want to send to all the V-teamers. Uh, we are expected to be much better than everybody else. We're expected to outperform, and that's the mentality we need to put in, in every one of you. And as I feel every day I come into work, I always think that, wow, today I'm finally going to do something. And I need that mentality of all of us. And I love that you open by acknowledging that, yes, there are challenges. These are difficult times in yes, the world. And I want to keep is. you here. Um, 
Uh, we're going to have Q&A throughout the, the webcast here, but I, but I want to ask you specifically, I know after Craig's update um, about the vaccines, uh, there were questions and comments, and of course we, we knew there would be. Just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. Yeah, as we all know, I mean, Craig shared uh, last week how we, as a company, are going to comply with the different uh, governmental mandates when it comes to vaccination. Uh, yeah, I also see some of the V team is being very frustrated on it. I'm also frustrated on the pandemic, to be honest. Uh, it, it is a very tough situation we have gone through. Uh, but I have to say, I strongly encourage all the V-teamers that are not vaccinated to be vaccinated because we need to focus on business. And I want everybody and move, move forward together. That, that's what I really want, the message I want to send. So uh, it's clear what Craig has, uh, has uh, told us and shared with us. And uh, so we ne just need to move forward with the business. We're, there, there's a tough times and it's a lot of challenges. But just highly encourage everyone that is not vaccinated or the V teamers to be vaccinated so we can move forward. Yeah, and as you said time and again, we will move forward together and it's time for us to do that. Hans, thank you so much uh, for your compassionate leadership and very exciting times. Yeah, very it is. No, times. no, uh, wow, it's so much happening. Uh, I wish I had a half an hour, but I, I know there are other people. No, we'll, see. people as well. <laughs> we'll see you again during Q&A here. Uh, but thank you, Hans. Uh, thank you. And, and let's bring up Matt here and really uh, dive deeper uh, into the numbers. Uh, as Hans mentioned, Matt, it's great to be with you. And uh, it, it's the, the numbers speak uh, a reflection of just how hard we're all working company-wide. Absolutely. It's a, a, a really good quarter. We see that in the numbers. If you bring the numbers up, uh, and we can start going through those there, both the operational and financial performance we had in the quarter. So you see the top line there, revenue was up 4.3%. And if you think about that, that only includes two months of Verizon Media in there in the quarter this year, because obviously we sold um, that, to, that unit to uh, Apollo on September 1. So if you normalize out uh, media for having three months last year, only two months this year, 5.5% service revenue growth. So obviously a lot of good things going on. So what's in that 5.5%? Well, 30% growth in equipment, wireless equipment revenue. Largely coming from two things. One, obviously lapping third quarter last year when there wasn't as much activity uh, out there, just as we were obviously in a much deeper part of the pandemic. And then secondly, the timing of the Apple launch was in September this year. Last year was a little later than usual in fourth quarter. Uh, so we got some, uh, some new uh, device sales in the back end of the quarter this year. Uh, so that's good. But then let's get to the areas that really drive our results and drive the earnings and cash flow of the business, which is service revenue. And wireless service revenue is up 3.9% with good performance in both consumer and business. And that's coming from executing on our strategy. And then Fios uh, revenue growth was up 4.7%. So really good revenue. And that's coming from executing on the strategy, as I said. From a volume standpoint, we had a good quarter in wireless, 429,000 phone net ads split between consumer and business, up significantly year over year, and in line with where we were in 3Q19 before the pandemic. And then on the broadband side, and as Hans mentioned, we reported a broadband number for the first time. He said we did 129,000 broadband net ads. Now, Fios is part of that number. Fios was up at 104,000. Uh, we're up about 400,000 accounts, households and customers covered um, in our files business versus a year ago. We're billing those customers. You see that show up in the service revenue. It's a great growth there. But then we also gave fixed wireless access numbers for the first time, 55,000 uh, net ads in the quarter, split between LTE home and millimeter wave. We obviously got C-band to come here in the not too distant future as well. So being a great position that we could start reporting where we are on fixed wireless access, now we have to take those numbers and continue to accelerate them. And I say in addition to the millimeter wave and the LTE home that we're selling today and the, the, the similar products on the business side, that when we get C-band that we can really accelerate those numbers as well. So glad to be able to start talking about total broadband uh, as Hans mentioned earlier. So obviously the volume is part of driving the revenue, but it's not just driving the volume. It's, it's also about what we're doing within the customer base. We're stepping existing customers up within wireless and within Fios to higher price plans as customers see more value uh, within the, the offerings they have from us. 
and then we'll bring in more products and services in that other uh, our competitors just don't do, whether that be uh, video items like, uh, like uh, Disney Plus, music, gaming, etc. Broadening the overall value proposition, allowing us to continue to drive revenue growth as well. So that's driving that. When you look at the EBITDA, this is our earnings before, interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, up 3.3%. The revenue growth driving earnings growth. And then when you get down to the adjusted EPS, uh, that's our earnings per share. That's after we pay the taxes and the interest and depreciation as well. $1.41 uh, up from $1.25 or 12.8% growth on a year-over-year -year basis. So again, you're really starting to see as we grow the top line, we see the benefit uh, down the income statement. And that activity, as Hans mentioned, allowed us to raise our full year guidance, both for wireless service revenue and for our earnings per share. Uh, we raised those guidance in the, uh, three months ago, halfway through the year. We got the opportunity to raise them again today. Uh, so you see the momentum in the business. And that momentum shows up in cash flow. And you see free cash flow in there at $17.3 billion. And while that shows us being down slightly year over year, two reasons for that. One, we had a one-time tax benefit last year, uh, which was great to get, but doesn't repeat on an every year basis. And secondly, the volumes in our business are up. This means more working capital, which uses cash. That's a good thing to have. I, I like seeing those higher volumes in the business and the impact there. But free cash flow, that's the earnings from the business. It's after paying our taxes, uh, et cetera. It's dealing with the changes in working capital and also our capital expenditures. Our capital expenditures, very strong against this year, including we've spent a billion dollars year to date on deploying C-band. And we expect to be within the target that we gave a few, a few quarters ago, of spending two to three billion dollars this year. So the team's done a great job ramping that up from you know, zero at the start of the year, uh, the fastest ever deployment we've done. Uh, we get to do those types of things, invest in the business that way because of the strong cash flow in the business. So you see the strong results there. So good operational financial results. It's coming from executing on the strategy. Right? And, and everything that we've talked about from a strategic cap standpoint, Andy. And so that's got us good momentum. Now we have the opportunity to accelerate that momentum and build on these strong results and deliver even, even better results as we go forward here. Yeah, it's the, it's the growth that we've been talking about from the exactly. very beginning of 21, and we continue yep. to do that. Uh, Matt, stay right here. We've got yep. a question for you. This is from um, Benjamin out of Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, and a very earnings-appropriate question. Uh, let's hear from Benjamin. Hey, Matt. Our 2021 results look strong, but our stock price, along with the stock price of our competitors, is lower. Can you help me understand why and how we can contribute to increased results and value for ourselves and shareholders in 2022? Thank you. Thanks, Benjamin. That's a great question. And certainly, I like the way you phrased the question, because as you think about what the stock price has been this year, and, and certainly we've seen it uh, you know, show pressure that, uh, uh, that we, we, we've all noticed as we look at the numbers there, but it's not just our stock that's, that's shown that reflection. I think our leading competitors have as well. And in fact, when I look at our stock price, uh, on a year-to-date basis as of last night's close compared to our, our, our two main wireless competitors, although our year-to-date number is not the number we would like it to be, it's actually a better, uh, you know, stronger performance uh, than the other two. So this is an industry uh, question that's out there. And what it really comes down to is there's, this, there's questions about the competitive intensity in the industry. Because uh, it's not just the three wireless players. You know, we've got a, a dishes building a network. The cable companies continue to want to, to offer more wireless products and services. So investors are looking at that and saying, does that competitive intensity, is that going to have an impact on your revenue and earnings going forward? Now, our response to that would be, you know, we've competed for many, many years in wireless against a number of people, and the results speak for themselves. We're the largest carrier out there with the biggest and best base of customers and highest revenue, et cetera, et cetera. So we've thrived in competition, and we intend to continue to do that. You asked what we can do about it, and it's really just a case to execute our plans. We told the street earlier this year not just what we expect to do in 2021, but what we expect to do over the next five years. And right now, 
investors on average don't have that level of revenue growth baked into their forecast for us. So if we execute on the plans that we have, we'll have the opportunity to reset expectations for the company. So we just got to keep doing the things that we've got everyone focused on, and then we'll have a good story to tell. Matt, thank you very much. And you mentioned competition uh, poses opportunities here. So this is Absolutely. a great opportunity for us. Uh, Matt, thank you very much uh, for walking us through those numbers. Now, uh, speaking of competition, um, it is the holiday season. Things are going to get very competitive out there. Hopefully, you're doing some shopping already right now. Uh, but uh, in that sort of world of competition, we want to make sure that uh, shoppers know, that our customers know, that all of us know, uh, that uh, Verizon and our retail stores is a great place to do that. So with the holidays in mind, I know just the person who may be able to help us out uh, with our holiday shopping list. Uh, let's send it over to Santa Steve Van Dinter. Here in New Jersey, it may not feel like the holiday season quite yet, but honestly, that makes it the perfect time to get a jump start on your holiday shopping. Did you know you can find some interesting and unexpected items for everyone on your list right here at Verizon? And I'm talking about way more than just phones and cases. So let's grab our masks and head inside. Okay, so first up, we're in my favorite part of the store, the smart home section. Whether it's a smart assistant to help them cook in the kitchen, a thermostat to control their heating and cooling, or a doorbell that lets them see who's on the other side of the door, we've got something to make everyone's homes a little smarter, like the Nest doorbell. Not only can they see when guests arrive or who's there, but also when packages arrive, they'll get a notification right on their smartphone. And when paired with something like a Google Home Hub, video from the Nest will show up magically on the Hub. A gift that's never out of style and universally accepted is more power. And Verizon's got you covered here too. A wireless charging stand or mat makes a great gift because most smartphones today and even some of your Bluetooth headphone charging cases charge wirelessly. And to use it, all you need to do is take the device and put it on the stand or mat. And for a gift your recipient never knew they needed, check this out, the Mophie Power Station Go Rugged AC. It's got dual USB charging ports, an AC alloy, which means you can charge a laptop or other large device, and jumper cables. So if the cold gets the best of your car's battery, this little guy could save the day. But enough of what I think, let's hear some of the top tech picks from our retail team. Jonathan, what's your go-to? Well, my go-to is the Google Chromecast with Google TV. It allows you to view all your favorite shows on any streaming platform that you prefer. And the best part, it actually has a mic built into the remote. You can just speak into the mic. And by the time I get the popcorn, it's already playing on the TV. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Next up, we're talking to Tanisha. Tanisha, what's your top pick? My pick is the HomePod Mini. The reason being, you can set the timer so that you can cook that turkey on time, and you place another one of these in your home, and everyone can be down for dinner on time via the intercom, and you never miss a beat. Holiday dinner's made easy. Of course. Okay, now I'm joined by Jay. Jay, what's your holiday go-to? So my pick is going to be the Apple AirTag. And honestly speaking, if you have a phone, a watch, or a tablet in the Apple ecosystem, I think this is an invaluable asset to have. And honestly, with the real-life tracking, every Apple user can use this this holiday season. Especially helpful if you're forgetful. Definitely. So there you have it, some great gift ideas for everyone on your list. And by the way, we've got even more interesting finds on our website and my Verizon app. I'm talking about robotic vacuums gaming accessories, even gadgets to enhance your work from home. So don't stress, get started early, and that will ensure you can give the greatest gift of all, time you can spend with family and friends. All right, let's give it up for Santa Steve and all those great holiday gift ideas. And uh, look what Steve left me. He, 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 he went shopping. Uh, he brought the gifts over to me, and, and the, here's another surprise. You know there's always surprises during these uh, webcasts. Uh, we are giving away all of those gifts that you saw there uh, to our Lucky V teamers who take our survey. Yes, there's always a survey after our earnings webcast. We'd love to know uh, what you thought of our, our webcast, and uh, uh, we'd love to know your thoughts. There's a question in there uh, that asks, uh, what's on your holiday or gift-giving wish list? Uh, so just uh, answer that question there. You'll be entered to win, and yes, there's all kinds of fantastic gifts, and uh, I'm going to get my little workout in with these bags here. So Steve, thank you very much. Um, you know what? I want to keep the energy going in the stores though. Uh, so with that, uh, let's check in. I mentioned we've got some leaders that are virtual all over the country here. And we've got Mr. Ronan Dunn uh, in Ohio at a store to help us once again think about these amazing gifts, accessories, tech, all kinds of stuff to make sure that we are finishing the fourth quarter strong. Hey, Ronan. Hey, Andy, thank you so much. And hey, thank you, Santa Steve. We're here in Cleveland, Ohio, not just the home of the Browns, but home of the best retail V-team. 
and really excited to be here at the time of prep for the holidays. You know what, Steve gave me loads of ideas, but we can go one better than that. We can actually working with partners, we've built this tool, it's a quiz that can actually help us to make sure that we get the right gift for that someone special. So we were just starting just before looking at the quiz. So I'm lucky enough to be here with Taylor, and Taylor and I are gonna finish the quiz and work out what that perfect gift is gonna be. So we're just going through here, Taylor. I think we're ready, are we, to go and finish off the quiz and see what it says, so. I could hardly wait, so let's just jump right in. All righty, so now when it comes to the holiday greetings, what's your style? We've got some digital personal salutations. What's, what, what do you like to do? So I'm kind of in between here because I'm all about giving the vibes, but I, I think I have to go with video calling everyone I know. I like to hear my family's voices and everything like that. Yeah, no, I like that. You know what I'm gonna go is I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna post my holiday greetings on social, because guess what? They're so scattered around the world. And while the video would be good, some of the time zones with my daughter in Australia, I'm just gonna pop it on. So I'm going with post my holiday greetings on social. All Alrighty. Right. So when it comes to gift wrapping, so what's the plan here? What do you think you're gonna go for? I'm not the best at gift wrapping, but my mom is really good, so I think I'm gonna just go ahead and choose, leave it to someone else. What about you? Well, if anyone knows anything about me, and knows I'm a bit OCD, so I'm gonna go, I wrap each gift as a piece of art. I think that's what it'll do for me. All righty, so what did you get? I got the entertainer. So here I'm a social butterfly and I'm the life of the party and I like spending time with my loved ones. Fantastic. What about guess you? Guess what? I got Globetrotter, which is good for the guy with a funny accent, isn't it? So I might be a nomad who prefers to keep it moving or a travel blogger in the making. I love that. This is really exciting. This is a tool that we can definitely use to make sure that we work out the personality types and make sure that everybody gets the gift uh, uh, they want. So. Taylor, if I was going to ask you is, who's the toughest person you have to buy for? The toughest person I would have to buy for, I would think, would be my dad. Um, he doesn't really have any specific things that he really likes. He just likes thoughtful gifts. So I think with this tool, it, it, it will help me think of what I can get him better. Okay. So I don't know what you guys are all waiting for. We have a fantastic opportunity here to make sure that all of those wonderful gifts, we couldn't have... Steve, sound of Steve here in person, but guess what? We have this Mophie Power rugged charger here. I'm gonna start the car with my charger. That's just amazing. You know what? I have a real hard challenge sometimes with some of the gifts that I have to pick. So I'm gonna redo this quiz and work out the hardest gift that I have to pick is, you know what? I need to get a change from meatballs. I need to get something better for Hans. So Hans, I want to make sure that I find out what your particular thing is so I can get you something from this amazing gift lineup for the holiday season. Andy, back to you. Uh, Ronan, I'm going to tell you right now, Hans is very excited about that. It's a fantastic tease for the holidays there. Uh, and, and thank you, of course, to our, our Cleveland team. Uh, and, and of course, there's, there's a, there, that's one of many ways that our teams out in retail are, are making sure that our customers know that we care about what they're going after this holiday season and beyond. Fantastic way uh, to uh, jump into the holidays there. So we're going to go from the Cuyahoga River a little closer to the Pacific Ocean. We're going to head out to California. And uh, let's say hello to Miss Tammy Irwin, who is at another store, not our store, but still a very important one. Uh, Tammy, you are at a bookstore, and of course, uh, we talk a lot about making sure that we're serving our small businesses the right way. It's great to be with you, Tammy. All right, Andy, thank you. And it was all I could do to put down my book to spend a few minutes here because I am at Malik Bookstore here in Culver City, and it is a fabulous and I'm here because we've been an outstanding partner to the Malik Bookstore in terms of giving them the capability, the technology platform they need from best-in-class wireless uh, devices and capabilities to security, blue jeans, and of course, one talk. You know, the Malik Bookstore story is so much like many SMBs. COVID created a very difficult environment. They were able to digitally grow their business to connect their second store with OneTalk, and it really is a success story. And when you get behind the scenes and you get to see the power our technology makes 
to businesses like the Malik Bookstore, it's a pretty exciting place to be. A couple of thoughts for fourth quarter. You know it is my favorite quarter. I count down every day. Uh, we have 72 days left until we wrap up the quarter. And I want to just say a big thank you to the Verizon business team for an outstanding third quarter. We talked a lot about wireless results. I want to also acknowledge that the work we do in Wireline remains so essential to how we set up the ongoing partnerships and relationships in enterprise and in public sector, which will earn us permission to sell the new products and capabilities. Mobile Edge Compute, as we announced with uh, Azure and AWS, the capability to do fixed wireless access, outstanding performance by the entire team in terms of making fixed wireless access a product and a capability we can serve. And you know, as I think back to uh, a line in our credo, our best was good for today. Tomorrow I will do better. It really speaks to my heart as I think about third quarter earnings, how we did, the momentum that we have, and now going into fourth quarter and what must be true in the final 72 days. Um, I have said, and I said it in our kickoff for fourth quarter, there's four things I want to make sure each and every one of us do. Number one, know our products and services. And Ronan gave you a great overview, as did Santa Steve, of the products and services. We must be ambassadors of what we sell. And for the business team, that's a different set of products and services, but being ambassadors, knowing our products and services. Number two, follow through with what you said you would do. So regardless of whether you're serving a customer directly or serving those who do, make sure you follow through on what you said you would do. Number three, at the core of who we are, operate with integrity in everything we do. And number four, make every single day count. As we think about the countdown uh, to close out the quarter, um, I'm excited to wrap up today by introducing you to two incredible people uh, who run uh, Malik Bookstore. Uh, Malik and his wife, April, please join me if you would, please. They have an incredible passion for reading, for helping kids have access to books, to using books as a great equalizer, and I could not be more honored to be here. And I know that the last uh, year's been hard, and yet technology has been core to your success. I am honored, as, on behalf of Verizon, to make a $10,000 donation to Unsung Heroes Leadership Foundation. That money will flow back through this bookstore, and you can continue your mission of getting books out to the community here in Culver City. So thank you for opening up thank your you. bookstore to us. Thank, thank you. you for what you do in the community. And I, with that, Andy, I will come back to you and say 72 days left. Go fight and win. There it is, Tammy. Thank you so much. And you can see in the background there uh, Malik Books. Uh, what a great piece of news. Uh, and, and of course, uh, the, the same intensity that, uh, that uh, our small businesses uh, have uh, aligns with the way that we're going to continue winning here in the fourth quarter. Uh, let's now move uh, to our question, our Q&A uh, time. And as, I, as promised, we'll bring Hans back up. Um, Hans is just so excited about this gift that Ronan's getting for you. We know that he at least will uh, wrap it the, very the well. The question right? if the system can figure out what Ronan wants for a gift. Yes, so that, that's I think true. That's far harder. That is true. So we're yeah. going to kick off Q&A here. Uh, uh, with a live question, and yep. uh, this, oh. we are joined by Marissa in uh, upstate New York, and Marissa's got a question for Hans. Hi, Marissa. Hi, Hans. Hi, Andy. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, so, Hans, I was just wondering, how do you see us co positioning ourselves to compete and be a leader in nationwide broadband? Oh, thank you, Marissa. That's an excellent question. I, I, I'm so pumped for it. I think that how we can do it is, of course, that we, we of course, have our Fios footprint where we are building uh, our uh, fiber and a great success. I mean, the last, uh, I would say, six, five, six quarters, we have had an, a great success with it. And we are building as fast as we can within the demand. Outside that footprint, we're of course building right now fixed wireless access. We're still building a lot of fiber, but we're using as a fixed wireless access to the premise. So we get owner's economics uh, nationwide. That's the number one thing. Then on top of that, you know, we have the potential of, of doing what a customer wants. If they want convergence between broadband and wireless, if they want applications on top of them, uh, streaming services uh, or other in-home uh, platforms, Alliances that's going to be connected that we saw earlier on. That's how we're going to compete. And we have sort of both the owner's economics 
the brand and also the knowledge how to serve these customers, if that's customers uh, on the broadband for the consumer side and on the business side. And that's also why our Verizon 2.0 organization is now playing straight up how I want to work. Ronan and team thinking about how consumers want their broadband, and uh, Tammy and her team thinking about how, uh, how their customers needs broadband. Uh, as we saw Tammy talking about it, and on the, on, on, on the business side, it's called business internet, and on the consumer side, we talk more about broadband for customers. So that's how we're going to compete, and I'm really excited about it. Remember, we've been on to the fixed wireless access for two uh, plus years. We know how, how we are our provisioning. We also know how to help our customers do, do self-install. We have done so much, so we have a head start. We know how to build, so I'm excited about it because we're building a, 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 another strong leg nationwide when it comes to broadband. We are serving our customers in so many different ways yes. and more. And awesome. that optionality we create for them, that's part of the strategy. That's the network of service. And some might remember that Kyle and his team started already 2017 with the Verizon Intelligent Edge Network. This is coming into play. From the data center to the edge of the network, we build the same network. At the edge, we decide what type of access we have for the different type of customers. D give them the right type of access that they need to do in their work, their business, or the the leisure or whatever they're doing with the broadband. Whatever you're doing, we're there for you. Yes. Hans, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to Marissa Knowles. We're gonna stay in New York with this next question, which is going to Craig. So we'll bring up uh, my friend Craig. Uh, Craig, it's good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Andy. Uh, so uh, this is from Rashmi in New York, and uh, here's uh, Rashmi's question. Hello, everyone. My name is Rashmi Ketta from the new business incubation team in corporate strategy, and also a member of our PACE ERG. What are the key risk factors and mega trends, such as climate change, that Verizon faces over the next few months or years, and how have these influenced our corporate strategy? Great. Thanks, Rashmi. It's a great question. And, and first of all, a shout out to Rima. If Rima were here today, she'd probably be answering this question. She's not here because she's traveling actually for a really important strategy uh, meeting. But I will tell you that Rima and our team produce a huge amount of really insightful research on all sorts of major trends. We look, you know, you mentioned the changing weather patterns. We look at economic trends. We look at demographic trends, what the population makeup looks like, where people are living, uh, population shifts. We look at technology trends, we look at geopolitical trends. You know, Hans mentioned earlier how we've been dealing with the supply chain situation and how we've gotten ahead of that. A large part of that is meetings that we've had going back years where we were anticipating some of the things happening in the geopolitical environment, the economic environment, the technology environment. Regular meetings that we do uh, across the VLC and with many of our teams to think about these trends. So they affect our thinking on product, they think they affect our thinking on, on the markets we're going into and how we think about the technologies we're gonna be consuming as well. So a huge part of our strategic underpinning is absolutely looking at these long-term trends. So Rashmi, thanks for the question. And Andy, back to you. And let me just say as I hand it back, how much, again, I appreciate you. It's great to see you. You're doing a great job as always. I gotta say, I think you're really solidifying your position as the second best up to speed host oh. we have. Oh, oh so second, oh, you, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what's interesting here is it's funny you mentioned that because your favorite up to speed host uh, is actually here, our, our summer intern, Audi, uh, is in the audience, and so let's make it awkward here. Now, I, rem I remember the 2Q guys, you know, I was in New York, and you, you guys were here. There was something said about Audi, you know, being the, the main man, I mean, hey, it's, uh, hey, listen, like I said, you're doing a great job. You just keep learning at the foot of the master, and true. someday you will be able to be as good as Audi uh, is. Uh, Audi, any, any input on, uh, on how this is going or anything? Uh, All I'll say is, I'm sorry you got stuck with Andy today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, in, in no, all, you're doing a great job, Andy. Thank you, great thank job. you. And, and in all seriousness, uh, Audi uh, was, of course, our summer intern, uh, and he continues to do great work for us on the communications team, and we're just so proud. Uh, it's an honor, of course, to work with our entire communications team. Yeah. They're an awesome team, and, and of course, an honor to be with you. Uh, you, are, you are my second favorite uh, team. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just leave it at that. We'll just leave it at Andy, that. great to see you, and Audi, great to see you. Thank you, you Craig. Amanda. Hey, I mentioned that uh, we have V-teamers from all over the world watching, and this next question, uh, we're going to send it back over to Tammy, and this is all the way in Paris, France. Here's a question as we say bonjour to Imad. We know that SMBs are optimistic about the future, but what about enterprise customers? What products and solutions mean the most to them? 
Ahmad, thank you very much. And it is such a pleasure to have people joining from around the world. I know Sampath had a chance to get out to uh, EMEA last week and spend time in France, in London, and with the team in Ireland. So uh, we're reminded that we run a very large global business and serve customers in 150 countries around the world. So thank you for your question. Listen, we are seeing really nice progress and good momentum in SMB. When I hearken back to why did we do Verizon 2.0, it was to be very clear in how we define the products and services that each customer segment requires. And within business, how do we serve SMB and medium-sized customers? How do we serve global enterprise customers? How do we serve public sector? And then how do we really wrap all that with our wholesale team? And if I think about enterprise in particular, you know, enterprises are going through some incredible transformation as every business in the world is thinking about digitization, about their own work forward plans for their teams. And what I would tell you is that virtualizing their networks is really important. Now, what we know is we offer a great uh, SD-WAN product that enables businesses to do that, but it also means that they're retiring some of those big MPLS networks that were part of our core. And so the work that Amir uh, with Nikki's team is doing in partnership with Emma and the team at Strategy is really redefining what's required to win in product. If I would tell you the one product that's most important today to enterprise customers, it's that security platform. How do we make sure we secure their network, secure their access, secure and be proactive about detecting security capability. So, so many products that we have, so many more we're building. And I would be remiss if I didn't just close with, we have a two-year leadership in how we go to market with private networks and with mobile edge compute, specifically private mobile edge compute. We're now in market with both AWS and Azure. We have the opportunity to take our two-year technical lead and really lean in and commercially scale the opportunity to be the partner of choice for enterprise customers around the world as we deploy these kinds of breakthrough solutions, mobile edge compute, private networks, and of course the applications and solutions that ride on that stack. So thank you for the question from France. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in a couple of weeks as well in person. And a big thank you to Sampath and the entire sales and service team for an exceptional third quarter, 72 days, make it matter. 72 days. Tammy, thank you very much once again uh, for leading the way at Verizon Business. So we're going to go uh, kind of reverse the, the trek now virtually. We're going to go from Culver City uh, to uh, back to Cleveland uh, to Ronan here. And this question is from Jeannie Saw. And uh, Ronan, holidays right around the corner. It's our busiest time of the year, of course. Uh, what are you anticipating uh, this retail environment to be like since the market is slowly coming back after the pandemic, sir? So look, this is a great time to be in retail. I couldn't be more excited about the opportunities. I mean, Santa Steve just gave you just a little flavor, a little taste in the sizzle video earlier. But this is a brilliant opportunity for us to bring 5G to life, make it impossible to ignore. We have a fabulous range of accessories. We got a fabulous range uh, of devices and we got great offers and promotions for the holiday season for uh, all of our customers and for people who want to join the best network. So I think this is going to be huge. I think there's a real pent up demand and uh, interest here. And Krista and I on the team are working hard to make sure that we have everything you could possibly need for Santa's stocking. And please make sure you use that uh, incredible uh, quiz so that we can get the right solution for the people you love. And make sure that this is a really happy, happy Christmas for everybody and a great holiday and Thanksgiving season for all of our customers. Thanks, Andy. Hey, Ronan, thank you very much. And I see uh, Hans is working on that, uh, that quiz there for you, Ronan, there. Uh, so let, let's keep it virtual. We're going to send it over uh, to Diego with a question from Nikki. Here's Nikki's question. Hi, my name is Nikki Maneri, and I'm in finance operations. I'm also a member of the WAVE ERG. Given the amount of competition there seems to be, what are we doing to make Verizon stand out from the crowd? Thanks. Thank you, Andy, and a, a big hello here from uh, 140 West Street uh, to everyone there in Baskin Ridge and uh, around the country and the world. Uh, well, first of all, a huge thanks to all of our marketing teams that had a lot to do with creating an amazing uh, Q3, and I'm going to finish Q4 really, really, really strong. But I tell you, to answer the question, first and foremost, the thing to know 
is that we need to run our own race, not anybody else's race. And how are we going to stand out? By being different and also true to who we are, because that's Verizon. And, and, and when Hans was talking about our strategy, the foundation of our strategy, the foundation of our brand is to be in the best. Now, others can be maybe the uncarrier, but we're not about an, we're about app. We are the app carrier, right? We're giving to give up, we're going to give our customers the best version of what they want. Of course, it starts with the network. We have the best 5G network, and I love the way uh, Ronan was talking about the network, because we need to give our customers more reasons what to why 5G is relevant in their lives, why it's important that they can have it. Second, what not everybody knows is that we also have the best value. And it's important because network and value go together. We give you more and we give you better. Seven entertainment options when our uh, competitors are only offering one, for example. But also, it costs less than what people think. And that's an important point of reappraisal that we need to do uh, with our customers. So how do we win? We tell people that we have the best network. We tell people that we have the best value and that the best costs less than what they think. That's why everyone deserves better. Let's keep innovating. We're a technology company with marketing at its heart. Let's finish the fourth quarter strong. Thank you. Diego, thank you very much. That's what it's all about, moving on up and uh, exciting times uh, for our CMO group there. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a live question here, and I must say, uh, this is uh, from Mr. Aaron Patterson, who's up, uh, up at the mic, and uh, Aaron, during this entire show, was, he, I think he was being nice to me and kind of holding it in with golf claps, but I know the man wanted to just cheer his heart out, so thank you, Aaron. Uh, Aaron's part of the network team, and, and, and uh, I know that this question is for Kyle, so Aaron, go ahead. Thanks go for easy. joining. Go easy, kid. Nah, no worries, Kyle. <laughs> morning, morning leaders. Uh, so I've been to Baskin Ridge all day doing some speed tests on a coverage app that we created in the NRB, loving the 5G. But my question to you, my friend, is uh, with the C-band launch coming up, what should we as employees and customers be most looking for? Okay, good. I'm going to answer this a little different than I normally do. You know, Andy and I sit around and geek out around uh, megahertz pops and <laughs> beam forming and all manner of good technical things. But here's the way I'm going to answer it this time. So if you... If you think about our spectrum position, everybody knows spectrum is at the, you know, the, the, it's in the middle of our whole organization. If we don't have spectrum, we don't have a wireless brand. So, you know, we've built up spectrum over time. And consider it like a two-lane highway. So what we did with C-Band, we went out and got spectrum. Now our two-lane highway turns into a five-lane highway. Now you can fit more traffic, you can fit more cars, you can generate more revenue. If you think about um, uh, some property, now we had a 10-story building. Now we have a 25-story skyscraper. If you think about a farm, we had maybe 100 acres. Now we have 250 acres. So we can grow more corn. We can grow more tomatoes. We can do more stuff, right? So it just gives us the ability to really um, come up with new products and services and really give our customers more, just like Diego said. And uh, you know, I'm really happy, as Han said, we're getting very, very close to being in a position to launch this. And uh, once we start it and get it out there and people start, uh, start seeing it and start appreciating it, you know, we're going to have a lot of upside here. It's amazing, the ripple effect of what we do, just all the places we touch. And, and with that corn and tomatoes, you're, you're giving Hans a run for his money with the dinner table talk here, but we'll see. Uh, That's what I want for Christmas. We'll see. Oh, tomatoes. Okay. there we go. Corn thank and tomatoes. All right. Aaron, thank you very much. And, and here's, you. here's the best part, Aaron. Uh, you can cheer as loud as you want for this next <laughs> section because this is one of my favorites. This is, of course, the Credo Award. Uh, and uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of people uh, to recognize, of course, uh, as we always do. Uh, but in this particular case here, you know we love surprises. And uh, we've got VCG Credo Awards as well as VBG. We're going to start with the consumer group. And you, you might remember, uh, you know, just... Uh, um, Several weeks ago, we were dealing with hurricanes uh, in, uh, in the Gulf Coast, uh, in New Orleans, and uh, our V-teamers down there uh, were not only hurting themselves, but uh, uh, were also making sure that our customers were safe, were staying connected. They stepped up. They thought about the growth that we've been thinking about all year long. And so uh, with that in mind, our leaders made sure uh, that they create a sweet surprise for uh, 3Q21's Credo Award winners for Verizon Consumer. Take a look. I am here with Michelle Miller in New Orleans at our Mid-City location, and we're so excited. 
has Doug Gillio, our district manager, inside. He does not know why we're here, but we have a surprise. Hey, how are you? How are you? Thank you so much for Good coming. Thanks, Alex. How Thank are you? For coming. Thanks to your leadership and your team efforts, we were able to still keep open a store and two indirect locations to make sure we took care of the community because you're right. We have a lot of portents because we were there when competition was. So thank you for that. We are so proud yes. to be able to give you a Credo Award for who you are always. You guys have doubled your new account growth, doubled your port activity, you increased your high tier mix by 15%, you were leading in pull through, and you did all of that with fewer stores, but we were here for the community, and you were catalyst to make sure that that happened. You absolutely put a thumbprint in this whole community with your team, uh, taking care of them, staying behind, and making sure everything was okay as well. And so it is our pleasure to give you this very, your very own feeling. Thank you so much. I just represent the team. The team did a, hard, a, lot, of, a lot of work, a lot of hard work, and uh, they are it. One surprise down, one more to go. I'm gonna kick it over to you, Sean. In just a few moments, our second winner, Dustin Gomez, is gonna join this video chat for what he thinks is a quick interview for Up to Speed. Little does he know, I'm listening in and waiting to surprise him with a Credo Award. Hey, Dustin, I know you think you're here to talk about the efforts about Hurricane Ida on Up to Speed. We're actually all here today to recognize you for what you did to support the community. So, surprise. Oh, man, look at this guy. <laughs> hey, hey, What's up, man? Yeah. What's going on, Sean? I know there's huge thanks to you and your team that we were able to get our first locations reopened quickly uh, following the landfall of Hurricane Ida. So. Big thank you to all of you guys, especially out to you, Dustin. I know uh, you've helped provide essential services for the community that was so desperately needed and also served as a point of distribution for the business and the government teams there locally as well. So thank you for doing what you do every single day with you and your team and keeping the customers and the community front and center. So job well done and congratulations, my friend. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. This is really something because um, one of the things I like about it is it's got some of the values written on the back here. This is not an individual award. This is a team award. We'll definitely make sure it's in a spot for, for everyone to, to see it on her. All right, give it up for Dustin and Doug, our VCG Credo Award winners. Fantastic. Uh, and, and keep it going for our VBG team as well. We've got another sweet surprise to show you here. And, and just like our team down in New Orleans, out west, uh, we of course dealt with natural disasters like the wildfires there. And we know just how important it is to make sure uh, that our, our uh, first responders are connected. So um, our public sector team out west uh, worked very hard to make sure that that connection uh, stays streamlined. Uh, and uh, Jennifer Cronus helped us with this surprise. Take a look. Hey guys, how you doing? I just wanted to break into your team meeting for a few minutes. How's everybody doing today? Great. Hi. Great. Great. Good, good. So I am here to thank you all for everything you've done for public sector, for our customers, for Verizon. Let me just rattle off a few statistics of what this amazing team has done. You've done over 334 customer engagements, nearly 1,900 solutions deployed with 32 mobile assets, 42 agencies supported across 16 states and 171 communities. And I'm thrilled to present you all with the 3Q Verizon Credo Award. So congratulations. Thank you wow. so much for all you wow. do. Really, really <laughs> proud of everything you do for Verizon and the public sector team and happy to be able to come in and surprise you with that today. That's so cool. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> well, part of our credo is we run to a crisis and um, boy, do we do that, you know, every day, day in, day out. If, uh, if there's something happening, especially here in the West, uh, we're aware of it. So if there's a fire, we get a call, mudslide, whatever it is. We're off and running, doing whatever we can to give first responders communications back. These fine uh, men and women 
you know, they, they sacrifice a lot. They sacrifice a lot of time. They're dedicated. They have an unwavering commitment, not only to public safety, but their communities and Verizon. And I am inspired and motivated every single day. And um, I'm just very grateful to have such a great team that wants to give back. Yes, keep it up for our BBG Credo Award winners for 3Q21. So uh, as we wrap things up, let's bring Hans back up uh, for some uh, final thoughts, dinner table discussion, uh, but wanted to get your thoughts on these Credo Award winners. This is interesting. You know, no matter what challenge is in front of us, not only do we meet the challenge, we exceed them, but then we also think, hey, let's continue to grow the business. And, and those were prime examples of that. Yeah, we have so many great V-teamers here. Uh... You get emotional when you see these Doug and Dustin and their teams and, and of course this public sector team that is going out there in, in the midst of the crisis. We have so many great V-teamers that is doing a fantastic job every day and it's a reason why we stand here, here after the third quarter and had a very good quarter because we have all the V-teamers. So I mean, you get proud, you, you just feel it's a great company and as I said when I joined the company, I'm very picky on the employer. Uh, this is a great company to work for uh, because there's so many great people here. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. it's, it's great. Well deserved to the Credo Award winners, but also saying that there's so many more V-teamers that is doing a fantastic work every day re around the world in all the different things you're doing. So yeah, just want to say that. And it's an opportunity for all of us to think about our colleagues that you know maybe we don't say as much, and we we, we can. This is an opportunity for us to. You remember the conversation we had uh, uh, very much during the pandemic when I was invited every day on the up to speed. Uh, Invitation uh, stand. <laughs> Just say. Uh, uh, about it's 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 about your team and the people around you. Uh, times like this, you need to reach out, encourage, empower, listen to your team members. If you're a leader, you need to speak to your team much more often. Uh, that's valid today as well. Maybe we don't say it equally often, but that's how we create the the culture of the company and. Uh, uh, you know, we have onboarded a lot of new employee, uh, employees the last couple of years here, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and Craig and the HR team gave me some stats, you know, since, since the COVID started, uh, when it comes to office employees, some 8-9% of all the employees uh, that has joined us, joined us during the COVID, mm. so they have never been in the office or at least not having the experience that some of us had before that. And then it becomes even more important to see that you're engaging, uh, communicating, and embracing, and making them feeling that they belong here. Absolutely. And um, just to reiterate one more time, Tammy said 72 days. So yeah. as we think about finishing this year strong, uh, let's put the tomatoes and the corn up on the dinner table uh, here. I didn't get that one. And, let's th and think about not just the food, but what are we going to say to each other, to ourselves, to our loved ones, to the world? What should we be thinking about in these 72 days? I think, you know, uh, when you gather with your family, friends, out for a walk, whatever you're doing, uh, everybody going to ask you about uh, uh, the third quarter, you know. Then I, I have a couple of things that I want you to bring. Uh, first of all, I want you to talk about the third quarter and wherever you are in the organization, you have done a very good job because we delivered a very solid quarter. Uh, but also re tell everyone that asks you, hey, we are the number one uh, in the market and we want to extend the leadership. That means we need to outperform every day. We need to do even better and continue to strive every day. That's what I want you to talk about. Uh, secondly, I think you should talk about the excitement you hear from some of my colleagues here about the C-band launch and national broadband we have uh, and things that is coming in the near term that is going to just accelerate and amplify our, our strategies. That is also very exciting and it's a lot of things to talk about. And the third thing I think you should talk about is of course our commitment to all the stakeholders society and employees, and, and uh, on the society, you've heard about uh, Craig talking about our third green bond that Matt has been part of as well, our commitment on net zero and everything we're doing in society. 
part of our strategy, part of the supply chain strategy. But also talk about our commitment for employees. And this month uh, and the previous months, we have seen a lot of engagement with the ERGs. And we're doing that because it's so important to us. It's important for diversity, inclusion, belonging, for everyone should feel that they have the equal right to be in this company and doing a great work. So I think that's the third one you should talk talk about and then ultimately bring it home. I mean, 72 days, I mean, fourth quarter, we need to deliver, we need to execute. We need to continue to do that, to continue to be the number one in the market. We have invested so much, all our stakeholders are expecting us to outperform and continue to do so. So that's sort of a wrap and that's usually a walk for one and a half hour if you're really uh, doing it well. <laughs> Could be a dinner for three hours as well. Depends a little bit uh, how deep they will go into some of the details. But um, I will test it with myself, you know, uh, very soon with my family and I, I will report back how it turned out. I will do the same and of course our RV teamers will as well. Thank you, Hans, very much. Thank you, man. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank, thank you. you. And of course uh, to our RV teamers out there, thank you so much for watching. Once again, 72 days. Uh, please take the survey. We'd love to know what you thought of this webcast and of course you can enter to win uh, one of our uh, great uh, tech goodies uh, courtesy of Santa Steve Van Dinter. Thank you to Steve, of course. And of course, thank you to our leaders uh, as well uh, for the great wisdom insight, the inspiration, but most of all, thank you V-teamers for watching, and until next time, you're up to speed.